Welcome to the SPSS demonstration video for Chapter 1, The Language of Statistics. I'm the author of your text, Richard Landers. In this video, we'll be exploring how to navigate SPSS, including all of the features that I'll be referencing in future videos. What you're seeing here is the primary interface for SPSS, which is the data entry view. You can see across the top, we have various variables uh, that are stored in our data set. So the store variable, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Then down the left side, we have uh, various cases, 1 through 7. Each of these contains a variety of data, uh, and each individual cell, which you can click on individually, is a single datum. You can input data into SPSS by clicking on any cell and simply typing. If you want to undo what you've typed after you started typing, simply press the escape key uh, and whatever you have typed will disappear and whatever was there beforehand will reappear. Now this is the data view and you can see how this is selected at the bottom on these, these tabs. The data view is where data entry takes place. The variable, variable view is where we define the variables associated uh, that, we, that we see in the data view. So if we click on variable view, you can see those same store Q1, Q2, Q3 variables, but now they're in a list. Each of the columns you see to the right uh, provides some kind of important information related to uh, what SPSS will do with that variable. In the next column, you see that store and Q3 are defined as string variables. This means text, while Q1 and Q2 are numeric. If we click back to data view, you can see this. A, B, C, D is in store, and yes and no are in Q3, but we have numbers for Q1 and Q2. Width defines how many uh, spaces are available in the data set to contain each value. If a variable's width is five, then that means five symbols of some sort can be used to represent a single datum within that variable. Decimals says how many variables, uh, or how many spaces within the width will you display points after the decimal point. So that means that if your number is, is a 3.14, for example, if you have a width of 3, that is, as much, uh, that is as much detail as you can provide with that number. Uh, if your decimals are set to 2 and your width is set to 3, you will see 3.14. If your value is, in fact, 3.14159, and your width is still set to 3 and your decimals are set to 2, you will still only see 3.14. So this, di this dictates what is actually visible within the data view. It doesn't necessarily mean that the data is not actually there unless, uh, unless the width is too small. If you have a width of uh, 8, for example, your decimals can go off forever uh, but you will only see a maximum of eight digits within the data view. If you have a decimal set at three, you'll see a maximum of three, decimal, uh, three points after the decimal point. If you see decimals two, then you'll see a maximum of two after the decimal point. The next column is the label, category, is the label column. What label tells you is what text will appear in, in output. If you do analysis on this variable, what will you see this variable represented as? So if we did an analysis right now, we would not see Q1, Q2, and Q3. We would instead see these descriptive labels. However, because store doesn't have a label, we would see the word store representing that variable. Values are how individual portions of each variable are portrayed. We can see the example by clicking on the triple dot next to, variable two, uh, next to the second variable, uh, Q1. We can see that this is set where 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 each provide, uh, are each labeled with different text. That means that if we do an analysis where these individual options are shown, for example, if we created a graph where 1 through 5 were visible, instead of appearing as 1 through 5, they would appear with these labels. So that's the importance of those. To change a label, uh, you must click on it and then alter the text and then click the change button. Uh, and if you want to remove it, then you click the remove button. Next, we have a column for missing variables. Uh, this, is, we, this is for specific analyses that involve missing variables. We're not going to deal with that much in this textbook, so you can pretty safely ignore it for now. The columns indicates how many columns are visible in the data view. So for example, if we cut this up to 12, you can see that Q1 has become very wide. That is the only effect of columns. 
Similarly, alignment only refers to whether you have left or right alignment. It is traditional for numbers to be aligned to the right, while text is aligned to the left, but there is no actual reason for that. Uh, measure is probably the most important portion of, variable, of the variable view that you should be familiar with. And what measure indicates is what is the scale of measurement for uh, the variable that you are referencing. Note that there are only three possible options, nominal, ordinal, and scale. Scale encompasses both interval and ratio level measurement. Uh, SPSS does not distinguish between these. The reason this is important is because SPSS will only allow you to do certain analyses if the measure has been set correctly. So make sure that you have, uh, that you have thought about what your variables represent when you enter them and that they are entered correctly here. This is also a really important place to check. If you try to do an analysis, you try to conduct some analysis in SPSS, and you find that SPSS is not listing the variable you're looking for, even though you know it exists in the data set. If that happens, it is probably because it is misspecified here. Finally, there is a column called role, which has uh, multiple options, input, target, and so on. This is not going to be really used in this text. This is, uh, this is for use in uh, some specialty tools that SPSS has developed to aid with data analysis that's very complex, and we won't be using it in this text. So this is the data view, and this, and the or this is the variable view, and we also have the data view. Uh, there is one other view that you are likely to see. If you conduct any sort of analysis, and I'm going to very quickly conduct one, uh, not real important uh, what it is, uh, you will come up with another panel, another window will open up. This is the output view. Now, this actually is a separate window from the data and variable views. Uh, so make sure that you are paying attention when this opens. You can actually run all of your analyses from here, and you can create graphs and so on as well. It's still connected to the other. It just appears in a separate window. Uh, here on the left side, you will see a, a list of the different uh, output that is available. You can click on these to... Uh, to jump to them within the uh, on the right side where the actual output is displayed, usually in tables uh, or in figures. So that's it. I hope from that uh, you're able to get a good sense of kind of how to move around SPSS, uh, as this will be the uh, this will be where all of the analyses take place uh, for your work in SPSS using these menus and using these three views. So that's it for chapter one.